All right, so we are starting again this new series of Fruit of the Spirit. Um, I mean, obviously, I'm not big Pastor Brian or older Pastor Brian, but, but, we, but I got the privilege to, to do this with you guys this morning. Um, and today we're going to be talking uh, about a specific, one of the specific ones, which is the first one, which is the base of, of our faith is love. Um, but before we get into it, uh, I, I wanted to, to read with you guys kind of the passage that we're going to be following throughout. And, and that's out of Galatians 5, 16 through 26. And we're going to read it this morning, um, if the clicker works. Oh, yeah, there we go. So if, it, if, if you guys have your Bibles, I ask you guys to open up with me. Uh, Galatians 5, 16 through 26. If not, the, um, there are Bibles provided for you. And, and I've put up the page number where you could find this passage in those Bibles. Uh, but... Um, we're going to open up and start here this morning. We're just going to start with Scripture. So Galatians 5, starting in verse 16. It says, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Holy Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation to the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, adultery, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, uh, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. So let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There are no law against these things. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed their passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or provoke one another or be jealous of one another. So here in these passages, I mean, this is, again, the foundation of where we're taking this this, um, this series. But we do have a key verse, which is in verse 25. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us not follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. And, I mean, that's, that's just the goal of it, right? Let's follow the Spirit in every part of our lives. Let's, let's open up to, to a little bit. And so, I mean, that's, again, as, as we get into these scriptures, as we start doing this, as we start reading a little more, I encourage you this morning to open up, right? Open up to the scripture, Right? Let the Holy Spirit guide your thoughts and hearts this morning. But we're going to break this down a little more in verse 16, right? Living by the Spirit versus living by our sinful nature. Right? Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives because we all have sinful nature uh, we, are, we are born with. Right? It's, that's the natural part of this. The natural part is the sinful nature part. Right? And, and just look at the, the world and culture around us. Right? We, we aren't taught how to be selfish. Um, it, it's a behavior that we, we have to teach to undo. Right? There's a battle going on within our, our minds and heart. And once we choose Christ, right, that battle just gets more intense. Right? Because now we're starting to fight back. Right? And, 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 it's, and it's a fight that we have to fight every day. It's not just a Sunday thing, which again, I know that this is such an important piece of it, but it's not just a Sunday thing. It's an everyday thing. It's a getting in the Word every day. It's having those conversations. It's meeting with those people that, that can support and help you through it. Right? Because the, the, the sinful nature and the Spirit can't coexist. 
we have, we're, we're going to have to choose intentionally or unintentionally one or the other. Right? Verse 17. It says, hold on. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants. Right? The sinful nature is the opposite of the fruits of the spirit. Right? Just like the evil things happening, you know, around us every day. Right? It isn't that God is making them happen. It's the absence of God. Right? Because evil and the evil things are, are, are the opposite of God. Right? For example, how do we measure darkness? It's the absence of light. Right? How do we measure cold? It's the absence of heat. Right? So, so you see, the evil in this world is, is the absence of God. That's what it is. It's not that God's, it's not that God's it's making it happen or letting it happen. It's the absence of him. And, and we control that. Right? Because as, as believers, we are told here to follow the Spirit's leading. And as you journey towards Christ, your sinful nature naturally decreases. It becomes a piece that, that not saying that it's not ever easy, because it's definitely, like, it's a fight. But it gets easier. It gets easier. Right? It decreases a little bit. Right? Uh, Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 7, verse 20, he says, yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. Right? So all these different things that are happening around the world, we're, we're just getting a glimpse of who those people really are. And Paul literally lists out different fruits for us here, right? The good and the bad. In verse 19 through 21, right, the sinful nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, adultery, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, jealousy, outbursts of anger. Like, but, but he also lists out the good ones. And these, these are the characteristics of God. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Right? A big part of our spiritual journey is described in verses 24 and 25. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading and nail our sinful nature to the cross with Christ. Kill it there and leave it there to replace it with the fruits of the Spirit. Right? And in John 15, verses 5 and 8, it says, Yes, I am the fruit of the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. When you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. And this brings great joy to my Father. Right? Because of our relationship with Christ, because he is, he is the vine and we grow off of that as branches, right? We remain in him. We have this opportunity to transform. Right, to get our source of feeding from Jesus, to grow with that, to remain in Jesus and receive these fruits of the Spirit. Right? But it starts there as the relationship. And today we are going to look again at one of these char- characteristics, which is love. Right? The fruit of love. Love is, is a word that is, again, thrown around a lot, and, and it has different meanings. Right? I can love football. I can love my dog, I can love my kids, I can love my wife, and I love tacos all at the same time. Like it's, it's, it's one of those things that love in the English language has, has one word. But again, in the original text, we have different translations for the one word love. Right? We have eros love, which is an erotic love. Right? Eros is a love of passion, it seizes, it seizes and absorbs itself into the mind. This love, again, is erotic. Uh, through Eros, though Eros is, is directed towards one another, it actually has self in mind. Right? The foundation of this type of love is some char- characteristic in the other person which, which pleases you. Right? If, you have character- if those characteristics would cease to exist, the love would cease to exist. 
And then we have storge love, which is a family love. Right? This love has its, has its basis in, in one's own nature. Right? Storge is a natural affection or obligation. Right? It's a natural movement of the soul. Right? For a husband or a wife or for your kids. Like it's a love that develops naturally within a family. We have phileo love, which is brotherly love. Like the city of Philadelphia, phileo, that's where we get that, get that word. Right? This love speaks to affection and fondness or liking. Phileo is, is a love that, that responds to kindness, appreciation. Right? It, it involves giving as well as receiving. But when it is greatly strained, this love can collapse, right? The brotherly love, the friendships, right? When sometimes your friendships are strained, they collapse. But phileo is a higher love than eros because it, our happiness rather than my happiness, right? It's a brotherly bond. But the one that I really want to look at today is the God love, which is agape love. Agape is called out of one's heart by the, the preciousness of the object that is loved. Right? It, it is love of esteem, of evaluation. It is the noblest word for love in the Greek language. Agape is, is not kindled by merit or worth of the object, but it originates in its own God-given nature. Right? It's, it's God's love. It delights in giving. Uh, this love keeps, keeps on loving even when the, love, the, the loved one is, is unresponsive or unkind, un, un, unlovable or unworthy. Again, does that sound familiar? Right? It's an unconditional love. Agape, agape desires only the good of the one loved. It is a consuming passion for the well-being of others. This, this word agape in the New Testament is used over 300 times. And one of the verses, it's again a very famous passage, a lot at weddings and things, that we get a description of what this love is. Right, is, is 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. Love is patient, love is kind. Love, love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice or rejoices when, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is hopeful and endures through every circumstance. That's the description of, of a God love. Right? And, and us, as, as Jesus followers, love is, is a very important piece to the foundation of our faith. Right? John 13, 34, and 35 so says, So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Right? Jesus uses agape love in this command. Right? The standard is God's perfect love for us. And we are to pass on that love to others. It doesn't mean that we agree with it or allow everything with it. Right? God doesn't do that. He doesn't agree with our sin, and he doesn't allow us to stay there. Right? But, but he does love us through it. That's how we develop the relationship. That's how we learn the truth that he has to share. It's through his love. If you look at different stories in the Bible, there's um, uh, the story when Jesus is walking through a town, and there's a tax collector that climbs a tree to see him. Right? It was out of his faith. And you know, but what, Je what Jesus does is like, man, I want to go eat at your house. Right? And then he went. And, and they just had dinner and they talked and they had this 
great you know, conversation. I mean, Pharisees were there with whatever. We knew that. But, it, they, but they had their own agenda. But, but Jesus, he doesn't ever ask him, you know, how are you doing in your faith? Like, he, he, just, he just loves them. He just has conversations and loves them through it, right? And, and then at the end of those stories, those people are always, you know, forgiven of their sins. They learn the truth through the love. It's this, the same as, as the woman that was weeping and washing Jesus' feet with her hair. She got fancy perfume to do the same thing. And Jesus doesn't, you know, like, lift her up, put her on a pedestal, like, look at look how great she... But, but she just has a conversation with Jesus. And Jesus actually doesn't even talk to her. He talks to everyone else in the room, saying, look at her. But she learns the truth. They learn the truth through his love for, for who she is and her faith. Right? That's how powerful our faith could be to the people around us. As we just act out on it and other people learn the lesson, learn the truth. We don't have to be the hard brick that hits them in the face every time. Right? As we journey, as we journey, agape love should be more and more part of our lives. So what does that look like for us? And, and we get, again, another clear picture of, of that passage, and we're actually going to read that one too. But it's in Romans 12, 9 through 21. So Romans 12, starting in verse 9. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Starting off strong, right? Hate what is wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Love each other with genuine affection. And take delight in honoring each other. Never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Rejoice in our confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospi- hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Pray that God will bless them. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with each other. Don't be too proud to enjoy company of ordinary people and don't think you know it all. Never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. But instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their head. And don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Right? So I I asked this question. If if these verses were a scorecard, were a rubric of how we're doing, how are we doing? How is our church doing in this? How are you doing this? To love others is to follow these commands, right? To 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 share God's love. Right? God is love. He is patient. He's kind. He rejoices whenever truth wins out. He rejoices whenever truth wins out. He never gives up and he never stops pursuing you. That's unfailing love. That's agape love. But here in Romans, we have an example of how to do that. I'm going to share this video with you guys, and then I'll come back up. But it, it, I really think it, it kind of hits the nail on the head with where we're going with this.
But there's a line in this video I, I, I wanted to repeat to you guys. And it's kind of the whole premise of where we're going, which is on our effort to stand on truth, we have forgotten what these truths are based on. To, to love others, right, is to share the truth through love. Right? Verse 16 here in the, in the Romans passages says, don't think you know it all. And there's kind of a beauty in that. Right? And the truth is because we don't need to know it all. We aren't any better than anyone else. We aren't special. We are just given the knowledge of Christ. Right? And, and, the, and his story and, and the grace and mercy that comes with it. We are just in a place that we receive that. You see, we, because we were there too, in sin. Right? It's, that's the st- where we start in the sinful nature. And we are taught and learned how to love. Right? Be- but because God loved us first, we, as a church, have the opportunity to love others to love this community, and to love our neighbors. So again, how are are we doing? What does your scorecard look like? Where can we do better? I want you guys, there's a little bit of room. I I left it there on, on purpose on the back of your bulletins. But I want you guys to write at the bottom of your paper where you can love better. For me, sometimes um, I get real upset with other drivers. (laughs) Or impatient with people in the grocery store. Sometimes, you know, we, we see these examples of people bringing up different views on politics or social issues. And they get real heated real fast. And again, that can be really upsetting for a lot of people. But how can we love better? Where can you love better? Right? Where do you see God telling you to love better? The bottom line here um, is out of 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 13. Where it says, dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God, but anyone who does not love does not know God. For God is love. God showed how, many, how much he loved us by sending his one and only son to the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us. And his love is brought to full expression in us. And God has given us his spirit as proof that we live in him and he in us. So kind of here as we finish up, I want to I wanna encourage you guys. So, uh, but <laughs> if there's something uh, you need to give God, right? That impatience with the drivers, the impatience with the people at the grocery store. Is there a political stance that you get real heated over, right? Or a social injustice issue that you need to seek God on? I encourage you to do that this morning. I encourage you to, where is that place? Where is God asking you, I can do better here, but I need you to open up to my love. Lord, as we look to you this morning, as we look to 
journeying deeper in a relationship with you. Open our hearts to, to what you've asked us to change. Give us the strength and courage to, to actually step out on that. Because, Lord, again, we know it's not easy, but the deeper we get in a relationship with you, the easier it does get. Lord, we love you and we know you love us. That unfailing, unconditional love. But Lord, just open our minds and hearts to that. Lord, be with us as we go so we can see you in the little things, the day to day, and we can get a little reminder of what you've done for us. We thank you, we love you, we praise you. Thank you.